So I'm trying to figure out which one of these I want to use for my next Instagram skit. I'm not digging this one too much. This one though, I gotta admit, I'm kind of digging it. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to Thugged Out Thursday, your TLG weekly commentary. Listen, today we are going to be talking about a new competitor that is about to enter the console war that is currently going on between the Xbox One and PS4. So yes, there will be a new opponent on the battlefield. Okay, so I'm very excited to talk about it guys, but before we get into that, quick shout out to our Thug of the Week Gamer tag Ryan Supernova G. Now, this is a family man who leads a rather selfless lifestyle by consistently putting the needs of others before his own. The submission that I got itself described a number of different stories about him helping out his friends and family members, and it really is that sense of selflessness and the urgency to help other people uh, that I know myself very much respects, and I'm sure the rest of the gaming community does as well. So, congratulations, man. I hope to game with you at some point, but you definitely are a thug. Now, if you yourself want to get the thug of the week, or perhaps nominate one of your friends or family members, all you have to do is send me an email to thuglifegaming at yahoo.com, letting me know what makes you a thug. So getting into today's subject, guys, make no mistake about it, this new console competitor that I'm referring to is the new generation Nintendo console, nicknamed the Nintendo NX. What? Wait a second. Okay, there's already the Xbox One. You can't have two consoles with the letter X in it. That'd be like if Mortal Kombat X was, was on the market, and then here comes Street Fighter X. That's just not fair. And I agree, <laughs> all right, but I doubt that that's going to be the actual name of the console when it releases. But regardless, guys, let's get things started by talking about the pathway to launch. What are some of the things that we currently know about the NX or some of the rumors that we've been hearing? Well, from a number of Nintendo executives and employees, we do know that it's going to be unlike any other console that Nintendo has ever put to market. They're trying to distance themselves from Nintendo's past uh, hardware, specifically in order to make an impact on the gaming industry, they want to grab as much attention as possible. Now, they're known for taking risks, okay? They introduced motion controls with the Wii, and then they introduced the gamepad with the Wii U. Now, as crappy as the sales have been for the Wii U, you can't argue the fact that the original Wii was the best-selling console of its generation. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. The Wii was whack, okay? Whack was, in fact, Wii. Wee whack wee wee. And some of you out there actually might feel that way, <laughs> alright? And that's completely fine. But there's millions of people that had a lot of fun playing Wii Sports and Super Smash Brothers and Mario Kart and Zelda, okay? They're very deserving of that 100 million sales point, but unfortunately, times are a changing okay today's gaming industry is all about how powerful your hardware is and how amazing the graphics are for each one of the video games i myself think that this is absolute bullshit because you have games like uh rise son of rome for the xbox one and the order 1886 for playstation 4 that both look phenomenal but unfortunately got crappy reviews regardless though nintendo realizes that they have to be able to compete in terms of hardware and going back to what i said about nintendo taking risks there is a few rumors that are being associated with the NX that might just blow your mind. For starters, a number of Nintendo executives have put a huge emphasis on third-party support. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, it's referring to video games like Assassin's Creed, Battlefield, or Call of Duty. These are multi-platform video games. And in order to effectively run those on your hardware, you have to be able to compete in terms of processing power. This is why a lot of people think that in terms of the specs for the new Nintendo console, it's going to be very similar, if not the same, to the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4. In addition to that, they've had a number of patents that have been filed at the United States Patent and Trademark Office that includes some pretty funky stuff. Hold on, Matthew Elizabeth Rogers. 
Are you telling me that Nintendo is about to reveal a virtual reality headset? No, because they did that decades ago, and it didn't work out too well. But there are two other patents that are piquing a number of people's interests, the first of which is a freeform display controller. Now, essentially, this is a controller that the face of it happens to be a touch screen. So you can imagine a number of different scenarios where this would be very fun to use. The real challenge for it, though, is going to be the same one that Xbox has with the Kinect. You have to make it extremely easy for developers to integrate this technology into their games. If they are able to pull it off, it's going to be freaking amazing, okay? With that third-party support I was telling you about, you can imagine playing Call of Duty and you unlock, say, an airstrike or something. And you look down at your controller and because it's a touch screen, it happens to be a bird's eye view of the battlefield. And then you just tap the different points of the battlefield that you want missiles to strike. I mean, how flippity flopping cool is that? <laughs> Alright, so I'm definitely excited for that. Now the second patent that uh, piqued my interest in particular is a streamlined gamepad. Um, Matty Poo. Okay, I think that already exists on the Wii U. And it does, okay, there is a game bad for the Wii U. The biggest difference, though, in this new patent uh, compared to the Wii U version is a rumor that's going around that is essentially saying that you're going to be able to take this game pad anywhere. There is a restriction right now on the Wii U game pad that only allows you to travel a certain distance from your console before the game pad shuts off. So essentially, you could be sitting in your living room, okay, your mom walks in and says, hey, we got to go to your doctor's appointment. So you simply... Stream the gameplay from your TV to your gamepad, you hop in the car, and you take it on the go. Do you realize the impact that would have on the handheld gaming market? It, it'd be ridiculous, <laughs> alright? But it's kind of one of those things you have to see in order to believe, so we're going to have to wait for that. But for now, let's go ahead and move into the second part of this commentary and discuss the needs to succeed for the Nintendo NX. The first thing that they need to do in order to successfully bring this console to market is to make sure that they have a popular, well-known franchise launch title, okay? Now, according to a CEO from a Japanese-based consulting firm, Dr. Sakan Toto, I hope I'm saying that right, he has stated that there will be a brand new Super Smash Brothers at launch. Are you kidding me? Then you can have my entire bank account. Regardless as to whether that's two dollars and fifty cents, I don't care. Just take my money. No, but seriously, <laughs> okay. All right, we'll get to price point here in a second. But I know for a fact that there are so many closet Nintendo fans out there that have just been waiting to rep Nintendo over Sony and Microsoft. Me, for instance, I play a lot of Xbox. Okay, don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> I'm trying to get grimy on some Mario Kart, you feel me? <laughs> so, if they launch with some great franchise titles, then no doubt am I going to pick it up. But there's also going to be a lot of longtime Nintendo fans that are going to be rushing to the store to get their hands on it. Now, that brings me to my second need to succeed, which is this console has to be set at a lower price point than its competitors, the Xbox One and PS4. The reason for this is really quite simple. The Xbox One and PS4 are proven and tested consoles on the market that already have a bunch of great games out for them. So you have to give consumers more incentive to buy your product. Obviously, franchise launch titles that we all know and love is a great incentive, but the biggest one is that cheap price point because people are so sensitive about their money. If you're at the game store and you're looking to buy a gift for another person or perhaps yourself, $25 to $50 can make a world of difference. So I think they'd be very wise to put it at that lower price point combined with the franchise launch titles and the hype train that is going to be all of these closet Nintendo fans, including myself, then, you know, I think you probably have revived and reinvigorated the Nintendo brand. Now, in terms of a launch date, I'm expecting them to probably reveal this at E3 2016 this year, uh, and most likely they're going to launch during the holiday season. But that is it 
for this video. Thank you for tuning in to my Nintendo fanboyness, I guess you would say. <laughs> but regardless, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the new Nintendo NX consoles, maybe some of the launch titles that you might want to see for it. Click that thumbs up button, share the video with your friends, and if you're digging the content, then feel free to subscribe. But I'll see everybody here in a couple of days. Keep living that life. Because that is what thugs do. I'm out of here, guys. Take it easy.